Hi and welcome to another video from Peacock Archery. I'm Philip Watson and today I'm going to show you how to make a custom grip for your bow. So uh, when we were talking about hooking the string, I mentioned that really we've only got two points of contact with the bow. One is our tab hand and um, we'll talk about customising tabs in a future video. Uh, and the other one is the, the bow hand and how the bow hand sits in the grip. Now, um, bow grips are uh, pretty generic. They, they do come in uh, nowadays in more different styles. Um, uh, high grips, low grips, um, uh, slightly wider ones, slightly narrower ones, but hands are unique and at most a manufacturer might make three or four different kinds of uh, bow grip. So one of the things that we do very often um, and our um, Korean colleagues do it all the time. Uh, you'll rarely see a Korean archer that hasn't got a custom bow grip. Um, what sort of we'll do often is modify the bow grip so that it better suits the archer's hand. Um, uh, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So um, here we've got a bow um, from one of our archers. Comes with a stock grip. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to try not to lift the angle up too much, but we are going to try and slope it a little bit from left to right. Because with these grips particularly, there's a tendency for the hand to kind of slide off that way. So we're just going to um, uh, produce a little bit more pronounced edge to that and try and just slope the grip from left to right. We're going to keep material away from the throat of the grip here. Um, what we don't want to do is change the pivot point of the bow and it, it's also quite uncomfortable if we if we build that up so it's going to be basically on this the, the thumb pad part of the grip. So first things first, I've got a cleaning pad this is just a, an optical wipe, uh, alcohol um, wipe. <coughs> and it's really just degrease, degrease this so that the material that we're going to use is going to stick a little better. That can dry. And what we're going to use, lots of things you can use. Um, my favorite is uh, this stuff. Uh, it's called Session Saver. So it's designed for surfboards, for uh, repairing uh, dings in surfboards. Um, Unibond used to make a, a material which was a two-part epoxy for um, plumbing repairs. But unfortunately they changed the formula on it so it now goes off way too quick. It used to kind of take 20 minutes, half an hour to go off. Used to definitely have about 20 minutes working time, um, but now it goes off super quick, <clears throat> which is great for plumbers, not so good for us. This stuff has got a much longer working time. It's a bit more like the Unibond stuff used to be. Um, and it's, it takes about 20 minutes, half an hour to start curing, and it'll be fully cured in, a, in about an hour. The nice thing about it is that you can sculpt it, you can sand it, lots of different ways to manipulate it after it has gone off. Um, so that's the material we're going to use. And here it is. And it is a two-part epoxy. We're going to need a piece probably slightly smaller than a squash ball. <clears throat> Got that piece there, put that back on. Put it back in the tube and put the lid on. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some gloves on. Not because it's toxic, um, 
but for some of you it might actually be an irritant so it's worthwhile doing this anyway but more importantly for me at least it gets absolutely everywhere and cleanup is really messy so putting a pair of gloves on it's a, a little bit tacky so this just makes cleanup a little bit easier so um, two part one's the epoxy the other one's the hardener and it's a bit like playing with plasticine so what we're going to do is mush this stuff together till we've worked it all in we can't see any more of the green stuff this will dry a kind of off-white uh, if you don't want to use this, you can use modelling materials like Milliput. Um, it comes in lots of different colours. Downside with Milliput is that it'll take 24 hours to go off, but it's a lot cheaper than, uh, than this. So if you've got a lot of grips to do, then um, it's something worth considering. Particularly if you don't need them there and then. If you're doing this for an archer, then putting half an hour aside or 40 minutes aside to do this is doable um, doing it with milliput you'd have to come back the following day to do it now you're going to get material over the bow but the nice thing is that it does clean off with soap and water so i'm going to pop that there and now all i'm going to do is work it up towards the throat of the grip and down towards the heel thinning it out as we go and if i've got too much then I can always take some off, just peel it off with my thumb. And we just, to begin with, just gently working it. What I'm trying not to do is lift the angle too much. trying not to make the grip too much wider but I do want to get a worthwhile slope from left to right doesn't want to be crazy but I do just want to lift that left hand side up a little bit and I want a nice sharpish edge that the archer can feel. Um, some folks will want a really sharp edge, some folks won't, will want it a little bit more rounded. Uh, it depends on their own sensitivities. Um, and it's best to be guided by the archer themselves as to what's comfortable for them. But you do want something that's going to be able to follow the lifeline on the hand. Tidy up that edge. <clears throat> okay, so there's our first cut. Angle looks pretty good, it's relatively flat got a reasonable edge along there, got a reasonable slope, not too excessive left to right. We're away from the throat. Hand's going to go in nicely. We've got a little bit of overhang here past where the heel of the hand goes. That's a good first step. So what I'm going to do now, um, I'll stop the video and uh, I'll come back in about half an hour or 40 minutes thereabouts and we'll just finish the process off. 
So if you uh, hang on there, by the miracle of uh, video, um, I'll come back in about 40 minutes time, which to you will be the blink of an eye. So here we are 40 minutes later, and this is really begun to set up, so we don't need the gloves anymore. I'll take those off. And we can start now, just do the kind of final finagling. Obviously in warmer weather this goes off considerably quicker. That's looking pretty good. So all I'm going to do is just gently smooth that down. If we need to, we can use the edge of a, a Stanley blade. As you can see, it's really quite quite workable. Uh, we can sand it, we can shave it, we can sculpt it, pretty much however we choose. I'm just going to gently sculpt this edge a little bit more. And then it's a case of checking fit. So angle looks good, hand in the grip looks good, edge of the grip is following my lifeline and terminating just there, which um, Lloyd Brown, who's um, one of Archery GB's coach, used to be Archery GB's uh, Olympic coach, um, imaginatively describes as the hand's butt crack. So that little piece just there, and that's where the edge of the grip wants to sit. Meaty part of the thumb sat along the centre line, thumb relaxed and pointing down towards the, the, the target, and fingers relaxed and in front of the bow, gently you know, relaxed and curled. And I can, I can push hard into the corner of that grip, everything looks absolutely solid. Fantastic. So, all we need to do now is um, put some limbs on, string it up, and um, get the archer to uh, to try it. One of the key things that you can look for is um, what happens with the long rod on release to decide whether there's excess um, tension in the hand, because uh, even just a little bit of thumb pressure is going to cause you to torque the bow left or right. Um, so that's a good, really good indicator. Just watch the long rod and see which way it's, uh, it's hopping. Um, but yeah, there we go. All nicely set up. Um, I said, if you need to, you can add more material. Just make up a small amount of extra putty. You can um, add it in, smush it, and it'll, it'll uh, join to what's already there. If at any point you don't like what you've got and you want to remove the whole thing, then sticking a screwdriver or a Stanley blade, um, don't use the edge because it's going to snap off, but a good, good stout screwdriver, pop it underneath there, and you can basically pop the whole piece off. And in terms of cleanup, I did say I'd mention that. Let's see if I can find another wipe. Now this is another, another alcohol wipe. As you can see, cleans up pretty quickly and pretty well. Again, a little bit of soap and water and uh, rough cloth, something like that. Take off these little bits with no problem at all. So, a um, couple of different options. The, the one Oops, there we go. Uh, what I'm using at the moment is um, Session Saver. Um, there are other, um, other versions available. There's Aquapack, it's basically the same stuff. So it's a two-part epoxy, it takes about 30 to 60 minutes to fully set up, depending on the temperature and the ambient. Um, it's about 10 pounds a tube in the UK, um, but you will get four, maybe five grips um, out of it, so a couple of quid a grip, so not desperately expensive. And that's it. 
So hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching and see you again next time.